Good morning church, welcome to our service this wonderful day and it's a special day because it is the mother's day. So turn to any potential mother, any mother, any future mother, any grandmother, any grand great grandmother and wish them a happy mother's day. You can high five them, put a smile on your face, show them some love, show them some love, it is their day. And as we do that I want to welcome us in our service this day, you can be up on your feet Wherever you are, from your home, from your hostel, from your room, just stand up and join us in our service as we praise the Lord. Are we ready to praise the Lord? Are we ready to praise the Lord from home? Come on, celebrate the name of the Lord in this place as you put your hands together for the Lord. Let me see you clap. Turn it. Come on, raise your hands above your head and give the Lord some clap. Come on, you can do better. Let's go. Let's go. Turn it. Turn it. Now let me see you move. Wake up. Let me see you move. Put some swag in it. Come on, come on. Need someone be a bona kwani yeah anyway ma. Yeah anyway ma, yeah anyway. Oh need someone be a bona kwani yeah anyway ma.
Teremok, 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 Panda, 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 Come on, put your hands together. But he's that God who's going to sustain us through our situations, through our circumstances. So take this moment and just offer a prayer to the Lord from your heart to the heavens. Uh, we are declaring that there is an open heaven in the place you are. So take this moment and just open your mouth uh, and proclaim his victory in your situation, in your circumstance. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter whether you are seeing God walking or you are seeing his hand. But he's not like any other man. He is a God like no other God. So just open your mouth and invite his presence in that place. Invite his presence in that place. Come on, don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Lift your voice and say, You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. Oh, no man can 
going to bless each mother wherever they are in the name of Jesus. And we pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning and a happy Mother's Day. We trust that you're doing well at home, um, whether working from home or staying at home with family, friends or children, um, that you're remembering to wash your hands and sanitize for us to keep Corona at bay. And we pray that the Lord will continue to keeping, to keeping you safe. We have been studying through the book of Psalms in our daily devotions um, for the last three weeks. Today is day 21 and we are doing Psalms 130. I'd like us to begin with that. I will read. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry of mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins... Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. 
And then I'd like you to take a moment and read the last section. And in place of Israel, put your name there. So for example, I would say, Shegs, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Shegs from all her sins. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word, Jehovah Father. We thank you that we are alive and well, and that, Lord, you have watched over us even in the midst of an, an unprecedented health issue. Jehovah, Lord, I want to pray that, Jehovah, you would continue to reign over the situation, King of glory. Mighty God, those who are ailing from COVID um, and recovering from it, I want to pray that, Lord, you would be with them, you would speak to them, you would comfort them, that indeed they would know that you are their redeemer. Father, I pray that out of the depths of their hearts, they would cry unto you, that they would seek you, they would find you. Father, I also want to pray um, for those experiencing other issues that are happening around the country. Lord, specifically praying for the floods that are taken over certain parts of this country of Kenya. Lord, I want to pray that you would be with those who have been rendered destitute by them. Lord, I pray that you would be their refuge and their hope. King of glory, save them from this situation. Give them hope. Provide for their every need. Enable them to be at a place of safety for all their children, Lord, for their relatives and those whom they can, they can get help from. King of glory, I pray that we will wait for you. We will wait for you in the morning. We will wait for you like the watchmen. That we will not give up hope. For you alone are able to rescue us. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We do trust that in all things that they work out for good. And on this Mother's Day, we want to appreciate all the mothers those who are watching this. But we also want to acknowledge those who are spiritual mothers, who are mothers in waiting, um, who are adoptive mothers, that even in such circumstances that you too can parent um, and be a mother to somebody. So it's not necessarily just for the biological ones, but every woman who mothers somebody in very specific ways or in a very nurturing way. We do hope and pray that the Lord will continue to fill that cup and that you will continue to have abundance in your life. So we have our adult service every Sunday at 11 o'clock, 11.15, um, tuned in. We have our children's Bible lesson at 10 o'clock every morning. And we do encourage those of us who are watching for the first time that you can tune in and have your children join um, the rest in their Bible lessons. Um, today we, have, we had teacher Omosh and teacher Wangeshi taking the kids through the lesson. And we really do appreciate um, the service that um, the Sunday school teachers are doing. That even in this season, you know, they can come over and record a lesson for the kids so the kids are also not left behind. We do hope that you're also um, having the craft uh, there's a link that has been posted uh, on our page and we'll share it um, on your screen. Um, for parents, please go to the link and you'll be able to download um, the craft for your children to participate. It is a very interesting um, time and season. Um, I would say this is my first pandemic. I have never lived through any before. I have seen other smaller epidemics happen around the world. But it's interesting because it has taken me to the place of dependence on God, fully relying on him and enabling him to guide me in every decision that I'm making, to guide my prayers, to guide my living every day. Um, and I want to say that so far he has not disappointed. So far he has been truly God. He has shown himself strong for me. So today in a comment section, we would like to hear from you. What is God revealing to you even in this season? In what ways have you had to depend on God? 
in what ways have you had to depend on God? And even as we depend on him, we depend on him for provision. We depend on him to give to us the resources for everyday living. And I would say he hasn't disappointed. He has been really, really good. Thank you for Jirani Muema um, and the opportunity to, to give food parcels for those who have been in need. Uh, I mean, the granaries have been abundant. And even in that abundance, we have distributed to those who are in need. Thank you for that. We really, really appreciate. And even as we continue to give to Jirani Muema, there's also an opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. Um, the number is on your screen. We have an M-Pesa pay bill, 761-780, but you could also do so from bank transfer, and the details are on your screen. We have been studying through um, the book of Fast Peter. Fast Peter by Pastor Steve. Um, and this for me is you know, one of my all-time favorites. Today we're looking at First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In all this you greatly rejoice. Though so now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. This have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And that is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. We thank you that your word is living and active. We thank you that, Lord Jesus, you enable us to interact with it in such a way where we can hear you speak. I pray that, Jehovah Father, even as we do this, Lord, you will enable us to apply it in our lives and apply it according to how you have called us and how you would want for your word to be. I thank you for Reverend Steve and the opportunity that he, he has, Lord, to share your word this morning. I pray that, Lord Jesus, even as he does so, your spirit will continue to talk to him and minister to him, and that, Father, your word will find a place in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Karibu sana, Pastor Steve. Karibuni sana to this Sunday service. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, uh, grandmothers. Um, you know, in Kiambu County, we used to have a Baba Yao. I want to believe Kuna Mama Yao somewhere. And Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for bringing us up. Thank you for caring for us. And I know in this uh, COVID-19 season, I think your responsibilities have increased. May God bless you and empower you and provide for you so that you continue blessing uh, your family and even beyond because you have a mother's heart and mother's hands and, and we pray that God will continually increase that uh, in you and continually bless you during this Mother's, mother's, uh, mother's Day. I, I, I wish you were around to get you know, to apeleke lunch, but um, we pray that you'll be blessed even right where you are. I'm delighted to be continuing with our series um, that we have been talking about from First Peter Rebranded. But because today is Mother's Day, I want to start by uh, going to the kitchen for a moment. Nita nataka kuchukua mayai, mama karibuni kwa mama jikoni, and I'm going to be boiling this uh, so that at least I feel like it is Mother's Day. Uh, the, the, my coffee here is already running, but pia... Um, nataka kuweka waru as a chemkange pia. These are uh, potatoes that have not been owed. They have not been owed yet, so I, I believe you understand what, what, what I mean by that. But karibu sana to my kitchen. I will be coming back to the kitchen uh, a bit later on. Now, we started talking about rebranded, and the scripture reading for us today has already been read. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to, to 7. We uh, oh, uh, yes, verse 6 to 7. We already said that this series of rebranded means that we are living in this world, but we belong to another. When, when Jesus Christ saved us, he saved us and we are in this world, but not of this world. We, we are listening to a different drama. Uh, the, the world looks at us 
and sees like we are offbeat. And we are offbeat because we are listening to the bit of a different drama. And they are offbeat to us because uh, they are listening to a different drama. Now, in case we are listening or we are working together, then it means that there is a problem. But we are listening to somebody different. I also referred to 1 Peter 1.1 1, 1 that says, God's elect exiles who are scattered in multiple places. Peter was writing to a church that had been forced into exile because of severe persecution. The, the, the heat had been turned up from the time that Stephen was martyred. And scripture records that people were scattered all over, apart from the apostles, the, the 12 apostles that were left in Jerusalem, everyone else was scattered. And all of a sudden, these new believers, these people who had come to the Christian faith, found themselves in a new land, they found themselves in a new town, and they had a new faith. The, the, the new faith was the cause of them being kicked out of town for the fear of death. Now, the emperors that were ruling at that time had set their eyes and their minds on finishing off people who believed in Jesus Christ. And so for the fear of their lives and the fear of the destruction of everything they owned and the property, they started scattering. Now, in that sense, they were also fulfilling part of the commission. Um, when I started sharing uh, from First Peter, I... I quoted Acts 1.8 and Acts 8.1. And in Acts 1.8 it says that uh, you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the other parts of the world. Now, the disciples had stayed in Jerusalem and evangelism and the word of God was spreading around Jerusalem. But in Acts 8.1, after Stephen had been martyred, a great persecution arose in Jerusalem and now Acts 1.8 was fulfilled in Acts 8.1 because everyone became scattered. So it was for a purpose that everyone became scattered. And they went preaching the gospel to the different towns where they found themselves. Now, it will have been easy, it will have been very easy at this time to actually give up the faith and live in earthly peace. But Peter writes to them and encourages them to keep in the faith, to keep in the faith. And what I decided to do was instead of proceeding from chapter 2 verse 11, or, uh, because we stopped at chapter 2 verse 10, I wanted to go back to chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 because I felt it was necessary for us to address this issue of persecution and suffering and trials and tests because it is part of our lives. And I know it's a place that we have a lot of questions and I want to address the aspect that Peter addresses here in chapter one, but also later on in chapter three and in chapter four when he makes mention of this kind of suffering. Peter writes them, telling them, what is right is to keep on in the faith and to endure suffering. And this is where this letter comes in handy because it encouraged the believers and also guided them to the why of their suffering, to the why of their suffering. As one writer said, many people can live through a lot if they know why it is that they are living through that lot. Now, right now, we are, uh, some of us uh, in isolation, others in lockdown, we are not able to access as many places. Uh, services have slowed down. People are maybe off from work, others working from home and so on and so forth. But it's because we know the why. The spread of this coronavirus has been said when people are in crowds and when people are in close connection to one another and there is one of them that is infected, it can spread to the rest of the people. And because we know the why, it's not easy for us to stay at home or to limit our association with others, but we push ourselves or we bear with it because we know the why. Many people can live through a lot if they know why it is. And Peter was writing to them because if they understood the purpose of their persecution, then they could be able to live through it and they could be able to make it. And so Peter writes and says, we have been birthed into a new hope. When, when, when we were called to salvation, we were birthed into a new hope in Christ Jesus. We have an inheritance that is awaiting for us. And it said that the inheritance does not perish, it does not spoil, it does not fade. And the inheritance is kept for us who through faith, the Bible says, are being shielded by God's power until the coming of our eternal salvation. I need you to understand something there. Though Peter is going to jump into verse 6 and 7 and talk about our suffering, he has already assured us not only of the hope and the inheritance we shall get, but the shielding 
of those who choose to walk this journey, the shielding that is happening in between here. So no matter, in case you log out at this particular moment, let me help you. No matter what you are going through as a believer, God has promised to shield you through this journey and to guide you so that you can be able to make it through on the other side. But then verse 6 and 7 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. This have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So let me dive into a few implications of suffering and trials. Number one, trials will come. Trials will come. They will come. It is a matter of when. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when they will come. But they will come. So understand that. Trials will come. Now, that first understanding will help us not to be surprised when the trials come because they are part of a believer's life. I really believe that every believer is in one of three stages. They are either undergoing a fiery trial as we speak. Number two, stage two, they have just come out of a fiery trial as we speak. And number three, they are about to get into a fiery trial. Every believer is in one of those three stages, either in one fiery trial, just got out of one fiery trial, or about to get into a fiery trial. And I'm going to be explaining the purpose for that at some point. Tests and trials come from God with a purpose. And the purpose is to help us to stand firm in our faith. And by the way, if you're not a believer, you don't go undergo tests and trials. Or God will not send them those to you unless he's drawing you to the faith. Tests and trials come with a purpose and it is to help us to stand firm in our faith. We all know that after we have studied, we wait for a test. Tests should never be a surprise for somebody who is in an exam or who is in a program. Our Christian walk is a program till we get to heaven. It's a matter of when the test will come. But it is meant to prove what we are made of. Did we understand the material we studied? Did we grasp the main concepts? Can we repeat them on paper in the day of our testing? That's the purpose of testing. That's the purpose of going through a trial. But temptations are different. I need to capture that. Tests and trials come from God. Temptations come from the enemy of our soul. They come from the devil. Tests and trials are meant to help us stand, to become firm in the faith. Temptations are meant to make us stumble. Tests stand. Temptations stumble. So know the difference between the two, okay? So tests will come in our lives. Number two, there is a diversity of trials. Peter says in verse 6, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. There are many trials and of many kinds. James says in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. So there is witness in this. Trials will come of different shapes and of different kinds. There is a diversity of trials. Sometimes the trials we go through are physical, you know, where, where sometimes you feel in your body that the struggle is real, especially because you can compare. You know, you, you see, I cannot get a job because I cannot bribe. And so you feel really tried. That, that's a physical trial. I cannot win tenders in the same way as everybody else. I have somebody in my house who has been sick for a long time. I am not stable in terms of my income financially. Business is not going well for me. That's, that's, that's a physical trial. You can, you can sense it. You can feel it. In fact, people can see it. That's a physical trial. Sometimes trials are spiritual. You know, the tension of living in a sinful world with a holy calling. God has called us to be holy. And so you're trying your 
best in your in your in your prayer and you're starting to feel like my prayer life is dry or or, or my, my fellowship is dry or my reading of God's word is dry and you're you're going through a season of, of dryness or you're going through a season of, of spiritual tension of how it is that you're living your life. That's that's a spiritual trial. Sometimes trials are emotional, worry, depression, tension, your marriage going through a hard time that you're emotionally stressed. Uh, uh, sometimes I think of the story of Elijah and I get to see of a man who was spiritually stressed or tried. In fact, he was going through a, a depression himself as after Jezebel had threatened him. The Bible says, though for now you suffer grief in your many trials, it means that the trial is not going to be easy. It's going to grieve your soul. Otherwise, we'll be okay with the trials. But because of the diversity of them, they are not, they are not easy to, to deal with. So trials will come. There is a diversity of trials. But number three, there is a purpose for the trials. There is a purpose for the trials. And it says in 1 Peter 1 verse 7, it says, This have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved to be genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So here is the purpose of trials. To prove the genuineness of your faith. To prove the genuineness of your faith. That is why trials come. Now, the image used by Peter here is an image of gold. To prove that gold is actually gold. Okay, because not everything that glitters is gold. We say we say it that way. So when they go to the mines and they mine the ore and they bring it out and it's a gold mine and they bring it out, they take it through a furious fire uh, and such an intense fire so that they can be able to burn off the, the drawers and remove the impurities and the things that surrounded the gold Till the real substance of the gold comes out. So they'll put it in the fire. It will burn. They will add it. It will burn until the real gold comes out. See, when God puts us in the furnace of our trials through a furious fire, he burns off every impurity, every habit, everything that is of sin, everything that is of this world. And if we stay the process... We come out proven that our faith is genuine. And somebody may, might ask, well, how, how would I know that I have genuine faith? Let, let me make reference to Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. Jesus talked about a farmer who went out to spread seed, and some seed fell on the pathway, others fell on the rock, some fell uh, on, on, on where there were thorns and thistles, others fell on good soil. When Jesus was asked to explain the parable of the sower, when he explained about the seed that fell upon the rock, the Bible says, Jesus said, it describes those people, the seed that fell on the rock, describes those people who hear the word and receive it with joy. They receive it with joy. They're the guys when you're, when you're doing your stuff, they're shouting, come on, man of God. And oh, they, they, they are underlining and then highlighting. And then, you know, they're doing stuff. They are excited about what is excited about what is going on. They, they will tweet about it. They will talk about it. They will put it on their status. But that is as far as it goes. As soon as they are out of that space, they lose their faith because it does not have any roots. The Bible says, when the day of persecution comes, they fall away from the word because what was there was not genuine. It has to be proven. Your faith has to be proven. And the way of proving it is through testing. And so testing is necessary to bring out the genuineness of our faith. It says in James 1.3, the testing of your faith produces perseverance so that when perseverance has finished its work, you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The testing of your faith 
produces perseverance so that when perseverance has finished its work, so it will take time. It will take time to be proven. It will take time to take root. And when that work has been finished, you'll be proven to be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And when it is proven, you will realize it's of more value than gold. For gold, which is of high value, the Bible says, perishes. Gold is of high value, but it perishes. But our faith does not. Actually, the end result of proven, genuine faith is praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ will be revealed. That's the goal. That's the goal of our persecution. That's the goal of our trial. That's the goal of our testing. That's the goal of our challenge of our faith. It is not go to go through persecution and win what rewards us here on earth. And there are people who, in their work with God, they feel, you know, I need to be rewarded here on earth. And God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I am not discounting the fact that God blesses us, that God rewards us while we are on this earth. I'm not, I'm not discounting that. Otherwise, you will be frustrated. But the chief end of our trials and of our genuine faith is to give glory to God at the end of time that our faith is genuine. Now, you will realize that we are not the first ones to experience this testing to prove our genuineness of faith. You know, Hebrews 11, verse 13, says, records about the people who are living by faith. And the Bible says, all these people, in verse 13, all these people were living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers. Remember that word, strangers. We are strangers on this earth. It says they were strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country that they left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he is preparing a city for them. Our calling is to a different country because the test that we are doing is for a different place. You see, when you do a local test, when you do a local test, then you are okay. But when you're doing a test that is international, then the setting is different because you are going to a different country. And so you go through even much more trials and much more tests and much more cost because there is a value that is added to that which it is that you're doing. It says in Hebrews 11, as he continues in verse 32, it says, and what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they may gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging while others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sewn into two, they were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. They were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised because God had planned something better for us so that only together with them would we be made perfect. Persecution is not about receiving things here on earth. We stick through trials. We go through them. We go through a, a variety of trials, physical, emotional, spiritual, but it is to prove the genuineness of our faith and our reward is the inheritance that God has kept for us in heaven. So you go through, through this, the Bible says, for a while, while being shielded by God, Warren Westby, and I quote, put it this way, when you go through trials, God has his eye on the clock and his hand on the timer. God is not trying to make sure that you have been burnt until you are crispy, you know, and you are tough. And No, no. He, it's for a little while and for a purpose. He has his eye on the clock and he has his hand on the timer. He is shielding you through the time that you're going through to ensure that you come out better on the other end. 
And my prayer is that we stick through. We have salvation. We have a hope. We have an inheritance. Our value is higher because of where we belong and where we are going. Not because of what we will gain in this world or what we will miss in this world. Our value is different because we belong somewhere different. And we have an inheritance in somewhere different. And the Bible says, therefore put your treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot reach. Because where your treasure is, your mind is going to be also. So keep your mind there. So that even while you're going through your hard times and your trials and your persecution, you're able to make it through. So one last thing that I want to address. How will we come out? How will we come out of these trials? You see, at some point I started cooking earlier in the service. And I put in some potatoes. And we all know that when you, when you are cooking a potato... It goes in to the water hard, but it comes out soft. Some of us go through trials with faith. You know, full in them. We, we go out, we go in strong. We, we go in, you know, faithful. We go in with, with confidence. We, we, we are even trusting because we know God. We know that he's going to bring us through. But then God puts us into the hot water of our trials and the hot water of our suffering and the hot water of our persecution. And then we come out soft, having lost it. And wondering, can God take me through hard times and still bring me out safe? And some of us come out and we are thinking, there is no way I ever want to go through a trial again. I, I just barely survived that one. I came out by the skin of my teeth. I also put some eggs in here and I started boiling them because some of us go in soft but we come out, you know, hard, you know, boiled and, you know, ready to be consumed but we come out hard. Now, I'm going to be giving this to my producer so that I endele kujibamba kama tunendele na service, okay? You can go on, my producer. See, we go in soft, come out hard. I'm thinking of the story of Elijah. Because Elijah was doing miracles. He was serving God. He was doing wonders. But at the very first sign of Jezebel's threat on his life, he came out so badly that he, he told God, you know, God, there is nobody else who serves you apart from me. In fact, God... I am not only done, even you, God, are done. There is no way you can be able to do this. Like his spiritual status was so bad, he, he went in soft, but he came so hard against God. Feeling that, God, you owe me. I have served you. You owe me something. How can this happen to me? Some of us go through trials and come out that way. In fact, it was so bad with Elijah that going through to that trial, he never, the, the, there is no record of him ever doing a miracle Again, from the time that he left Mount Horeb, yet he went there as a, as a man who was soft and surrendered to God. He came out a hard man out of his experience and even rejecting the very things that he knew to be true. But there is a third. There is a third way we can go through trials. When we started off, I also put on a kettle of coffee. And you know, it's interesting because coffee goes in surrendered and grounded and it goes through the hot water just like just like the potatoes and just like the eggs did it goes through the hot water but the resultant product is something that smells good is something that is hot is something that can be consumed hot tasty and useful my prayer is that when you go through your trial you're going to come out useful. You're going to go in surrendered and grounded so that God's heat goes through you. And at the end of it, there is a product that comes out hot and tasty and useful. But you do know that we make coffee, for those of you who are regular coffee takers, every morning. So if morning by morning new masses I see, I am also postured in a way that were God to take me through another trial. I'd still come out again and again because I'm like coffee. 
I am ready to be taken through the hot fire again. You see, you cannot boil an egg three times. You cannot boil a potato three times. They, they go in hard, they come out soft, they go in soft, they come out hard, and they are done. But coffee, you can make another pot again and again because it has surrendered itself and it is grounded and it's going to come out hot, tasteful, and useful. What is your posture? What is your posture when God is taking you through trials? Peter says, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may suffer grief in many diverse trials. They have come so that they can prove the genuineness of your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes, though even refined by fire, so that it may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. It is a matter of when we will go through trials, when we will go through persecution. You see, one part of this, when it results in praise, glory, and honor through Jesus Christ. Last week when I was talking, I talked about we are a royal priesthood, a chosen people, so that we can offer a sacrifice of, 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 of praise, something that brings a good aroma to the world. You know, when we go through persecution and we prove the genuineness of our faith, it brings God praise and glory because others see it. Because we are scattered, others see how we are living our lives. Others see our hope that is in God. Others see about the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus that is promised to us and that we are bearing through this. And we are becoming a sweet-smelling aroma, hot, tasty, and useful for the kingdom. And they are drawn to Christ. One of the results of your persecution and your testing should be drawing people to Christ. You see, if you go through it and you come out so hard that you have rejected God, you actually push even more away from God. If you go in and you come out so soft that you are wondering, God, you cannot, you know, your, your soul is um, downcast and everything. It starts speaking to that maybe I cannot trust that God that took you through. But if you come out tasty and hot and useful like coffee, you're going to be communicating, I can trust in this God. And even unbelievers will see it and give glory to God. It's a matter of when. It's a matter of when the trials will come to you. They will come in diverse ways. They will come from brethren. They will come from the world. They will come from your bosses. They'll come from abroad. It's, they are diverse. But the goal is to prove the genuineness of your faith to the glory of God. So how will you come out? I, I, somebody shared with me this morning. He told me, you see, Pastor Steve, you can choose to wear the brand that God is giving you. You can choose to wear the brand or you can choose to bear the brand. I am inviting us while we walk this journey, while we are tested and tried, that we will bear the brand of Jesus. Paul says that I am crucified with Christ. I am, it, it, it speaks to the fact that I have pushed this until I am ready to be identified with Christ. In fact, one of the things that they say about gold is that when gold will be put in that furious furnace, the, the, the refiner knew that it was ready when he would look at the gold and see his reflection on that gold. Guess when you are ready? It is that day when you shall be so like Jesus that when Jesus looks at you, and when the world looks at you, the reflection of having gone through trials and tests and tribulations and persecution, you are reflecting Jesus Christ, hot, tasty, and useful in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? We give you thanks, everlasting Father, for giving us this moment to hear your word, to learn from it. I want to pray for every believer who's listening to me. Some of us could be in the space where we are going through a heavy trial, and it is okay because you are with us. You have promised us that you will shield us while we walk this journey. And at the end of it, we'll be able to see the full inheritance of what you've kept for us. So shield us, give us the strength, give us that word of encouragement so that we'll be able to make it through. It will prove the genuineness of our faith, even as we walk with you and even as we trust in you. I pray that we'll be able to know that truth and in walking with it and in living in it, we'll be able to be bold and courageous because we believe in God and we trust in Him. I want to pray, Heavenly Father, that Lord God will be able to be encouraged though we go through a diversity of them and we'll be able to know that God is our shield and our strength and praise and glory and honor will go to Him at the end of it all. I pray for some who are on the verge of giving up. May they not give up. May they keep trusting in God. I pray for some who are going through it and maybe the posture is one of those where they go in hard and come out so badly off soft. 
that they be filled there of no use to the kingdom or going so soft and come out so hard and rebelling against God. Lord God, would you help us to change our posture so that we surrender to you and we come out not only wearing the brand of Jesus, but bearing the brand of Jesus for the glory and honor of your name. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening in. I pray that you are blessed. You can always review the other previous sermons that you have done from 1 Peter. Next Sunday, I'm going to be continuing from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and teaching a, a bit more. Can I invite you to join us on Tuesday, 7 p.m. for our prayer service. Uh, find us on Facebook Live and also on YouTube. We're going to be there uh, to minister to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shall we share in the words of the grace together? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. The words of Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed and splendid week.